Okay, well, welcome to the old classic car channel and it's the Saab 99 Turbo of 1977 and 78 that is the subject of today's classic car brochure review. This is a UK market brochure and cars did differ slightly on other markets but these are the UK cars for 77 and 78. Uh, the 99 Turbo made its debut at the Frankfurt Motor Show in September of 1977 and initially it was available as a three-door hatchback or combi coupe only um, in 1977, 78 and into 79. The two-door came along in 79 but the first cars <coughs> were all three-door hatchbacks and that is the model that's featured in this particular brochure. And like I say this is a UK market brochure for 1978 and on the cover we've got the very distinctive wheel design the Inca Alley wheel that was fitted to the 99 turbos and also later the three-door first-generation 900 turbos um, there's a if you actually look elsewhere on this channel you'll see a brochure for those early 900s um, but this is the early 99 turbo of 77 and 78 that we're looking at here and if we go inside we are presented firstly with a number of reviews from leading motor ma uh, magazines of the time um, for instance motor in England say Take the Saab Turbo for instance, while its engine is one of the smoothest fours around in normally aspirated form, there is no doubt when you're behind the wheel that it is a four, but when the turbo cuts in the engine smooths out so much that it feels like a good six. Uh, Saab's idea being to take on six cylinder cars such as the 5 Series BMW, but benefit from a four cylinder's uh, fuel economy, uh, and the application of a turbo helped them achieve that. Uh, Saab were really pretty much the first company to put a turbocharged car into mass production. Uh, obviously BMW had had a dabble with the 2002 Turbo and Porsche with the 911 and Chevrolet with the Corvair long before that. So other people had applied turbochargers to road cars but Saab were the first to really do it on a mainstream model. Uh, and here we have a black three-door 99 Turbo heading through some very typically Scandinavian woodland and because this is a UK market brochure it's a three-door in black because black was the only colour you could buy them in but like the old Model T. Now while I'm on this page I'm just going to dig out this other brochure here this is a 1977 brochure so the first brochure for the Swedish market and if we open up the magazine of uh, the brochure rather on the first page here we have a cardinal red car um, one of the other colours that these were available in on other markets so the UK had black cars some other markets you could buy them in cardinal red which is a deep metallic red the only 99 turbos that were for sale in this country with this color scheme were the five doors in 1978 a small run of five door 99 turbos were produced in cardinal red and were sold here and that was this particular color here but the three doors they were never sold here in that color but as this is in swedish it's not much use to me but i just thought it was interesting to show the difference between the two markets in these illustrations so I'll just pop that over there and Saab introduced it here they mentioned the Frankfurt Motor Show and so on and the fact that the car is designed very much as a performance car with the economy of a four-cylinder engine so let's keep going and see what we've got <coughs> like I say later on the two-door 99 turbo will be introduced to the UK market but at this point in time you can only choose the three-door combi coupe hatchback and here we have the four cylinder engine with the Garrett T3 turbocharger nestled down there, fuel injection, Bosch K Jetronic, and so on. <clears throat> and there's no shortage of fast cars, but hardly any are as safe in overtaking as the Saab Turbo. A top speed of 195 km an hour from rest to 100 km in 8.9 seconds. These are impressive figures, although perhaps slightly theoretical. After all, we hardly ever use the power resources in this way, not even on the German Autobahn. The true strength of the Saab Turbo is its acceleration and verve in the range of speeds between 60 and 160 km an hour, the range where overtaking is safer since it is quicker. The turbocharger begins to deliver extra power at engine speeds as low as 1500 rpm and at 3000 rpm the torque is up to 24 kg foot per meter, i.e. 45% higher than when the turbocharger is not in operation. Sparkling acceleration, front wheel drive and exceptional road holding and lavish space and comfort as well. What else would you wish for perfect joy of driving? And again, you can see the three door. The 99 had already been made as the Combi Coupe in years before that, but the, the turbo version is shown here with the badging, the Inca alloys, the front air dam, headlamp wipers, and so on. Uh, 
previously the most performance oriented Saab 99 was the 99 EMS which had the fuel injection but the turbo just moved everything on a step further and had the, the rear wing below the back window and so on. The turbo gauge looked a bit of an afterthought that was mounted on top of the dashboard pod rather than actually within the dashboard um, but yeah a fine car quite a quirky car but an amazing bit of kit and as Saab referred to actually in the text here it was all about mid-range acceleration it was a very torquey four-cylinder engine and if you had the turbo spooled up when you went to overtake things there were a few cars that would keep up with it in the mid-range punch so 30 to 50 40 to 60 it would show a clean pair of wheels to most cars on the road so even though 145 brake horsepower doesn't sound a great deal now back in the day it was quite a punchy machine Here we have the engine itself, the B-series engine, 2 litre turbocharger, there we go, the T3. The Saab Turbo has robbed sports car drivers of their exclusive right to fast cars with turbocharged engines. Turbocharged engines have traditionally been reserved for powering very fast and expensive sports cars, cars which were usually about outside the reach of the average motorist, but we have changed all that. The Saab Turbo is the first conventional family car to be powered by a turbocharged petrol engine developed along entirely new principles. And it goes on to describe some of the history of the uh, turbocharging, why they went down the turbocharging route as opposed to six cylinders or supercharging, etc. Let's keep going. And again, we have various charts and descriptions of the turbocharger because this was sort of fairly new technology to most people at the time. Um, up until then, if you wanted a performance car, you'd probably nip along to your local BMW garage and order a 525i or a 528i or something like that. But Saab came along, and previously there'd been sort of a solid, reliable, well-made car, but not that dazzlingly exciting, I think it's fair to say. But when the turbo came along, everything changed and suddenly became a performance player. And here's, I mean, here's an advert from back in the day, from 1978, and it's quite an eye-catching design jet black again a black three-door turbo the astonishing Saab turbo dramatically different in its all black livery and packing an amazing turbocharged punch sumptuous comfort for five a luxurious array of standard extras up to 52.9 cubic feet of colossal cargo hold the safety reliability and sheer good sense which are all hallmarks of the entire Saab range so there you go jet black the 99 turbo of 1978 if we keep going here, we'll see a cracking side view of the three-door 99T with its three three-spoke steering wheel, which again featured on the very first 900 turbos as well. A unique combination: a big car comfort and sports car performance. The Saab Turbo has much more to offer in terms of comfort than other cars. An interior that gives all occupants ample opportunity for adjusting their own seating attitude which is well insulated and silent even at high speeds. Front seats which are amongst the most comfortable available today and with extra adjustment for the driver's seat. A back seat which is extra comfortable and broad with an elbow room of no less than 153 centimetres. Add to this the sports car performance and a top speed of 195 kilometres an hour and you have a car which is unique and pace setting. And these have certainly grown on me over the years. Initially I, I wasn't really that keen. I thought the proportions were a little bit odd. Fairly short bonnet and a long back but over the years it's grown on me quite a lot the the early 99 turbos uh, by comparison these were the two-door turbos this the cars were very popular in rallying back in the day and these photos show Stig Blomfist in the two-door on various events Lombard it's probably the RAC rally I'm guessing car number two so these show what the 99 turbo was well suited for i.e. endurance rallying and so on. Yeah. A slight tie issue going on there. But yeah, the 99 Turbo was very popular in competition, front wheel drive, but loads of grunt, and uh, you had to plan a little bit with the turbo spooling up. There was a bit of lag in these early turbocharged cars, um, but once you got the hang of it and had it spinning up ready before you actually needed it, um, you'd be off down the road like a scalded cat. So that was the two door turbo, just for comparison, and these are the three door, obviously. I haven't got any photos to hand of the five door 99 turbo but they're few and far between even back in the day and here we have a bit more background information on the development of the 99 
Uh, and there's a car, to, some sort of hot rod strip by the look of it. Uh, Stig Blomfist helping the design team, the designers. Saab turbocharging is backed by more than five years of development work and testing. Our first attempts at turbocharging date back to the early 1970s, but our development work was not intensified until after the 1974 oil crisis, when moderate fuel consumption became an important consideration, even on high-performance cars. Then we've got some references to the Scania division, lorries of course. Bench testing, high-speed tests in Germany. Now, the characteristics of the engine have also been tested under the conditions often prevailing on the European continent. Some of the tests have been run by the Swedish rally drivers Stig Blomqvist and Per Eklund, who covered a total of 120,000 kilometres at speeds around 160 to 180 kilometres per hour. And we've got winter testing in Canada, high temperature tests in Death Valley in the USA, and here we have a very small picture of a development car four-door 99 turbo in cardinal red with the EMS style alley wheels so this was obviously a bit of a development hack before the finalized uh, specifications came out if you like uh, the group of test drivers comprised in a broad based test include the Finnish state police and the mobile police in Switzerland and we've got high altitude tests in the Rocky Mountains and general road tests in Sweden and elsewhere so let's carry on going here And then just a few more details of the safety, the seats, mirrors, brakes and so on. And then the technical spec of the Saab Turbo for 1978. Four cylinder liquid cooled inline engine, overhead cam, longitudinally arranged in the engine compartment and integrated with a clutch gearbox and differential. Uh, the engine block slopes at 45 degrees, made of alloy cast iron. And so on. Chassis dimensions and weights and the equipment. Uh, so that was the 99 Turbo for the UK market of 1978. Like I say, three doors were the only option available initially. Then in 1979, the two-door 99 Turbo came along and they were sold in two batches. There was a batch of 200 red cars, 200 black cars. And then there was a further 200 red cars, Cinnabar Red. Um, I believe other markets did have some other colour options. There was a green metallic and there was polar white, which was the colour of the very first car at the Frankfurt Motor Show. But the green and the white cars never came to the UK as new cars. It was only red or black, ultimately. And then it was obviously replaced by the 900 um, a couple of years later. Uh, the 99 Turbo in two-door form was produced between 79 and 81, and then the 900 uh, took over completely. In all, 10,699 turbos were produced, and they were all four-speed, four-cylinder cars, eight-valve turbo engines with the fuel injection. So, I hope that was of some interest. Uh, quite a soft spot for the 99 turbos. Uh, one of the few cars that makes it onto my 70s possible car purchases list. So hopefully that was of interest. Like I say, these are the Rally two doors, just for comparison. The styling differences. These were a standard saloon shape, if you like, with a boot lid. And the hatchback combi coupe is this one here. So, thanks for watching. Please also check out the video that I've already uploaded on the early first series 900 turbos. And uh, if you're interested, interested in all Saabs, uh, there's a video about the uh, two-stroke van that I once found behind the Saab dealership in Hazel Grove. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, there'll be more videos coming along like this very soon. Thank you.